Well, hi, Martin. It's good to see you. Now, good to see you, I say, because we're still doing this by video. Yeah. But we did originally record our podcast <laughs> at oh, Amsterdam. You're going to out me then. You're going to out me for <laughs> stuffing up. <aren't> <laughs> so welcome, everyone, to Infection Control Matters, live from our homes in Australia and the UK. Um, first recorded in Amsterdam for when we were visited Interclean, but unfortunately didn't quite Recording didn't quite work, so we're re-recording it. And uh, I got, we can... I got ten seconds of it, but yeah, unfortunately, the recorder failed. No, probably due to user error, but there we are. Maybe user error. So we were in Interclean uh, just a few weeks ago, and um, Interclean—it's massive, isn't it? Yeah, you better explain what Interclean is. Well, yeah, I guess so. Interclean is a is a big expo for cleaning related companies and products, and. Um, when I first heard about it, I thought, that sounds sounds all right. And I was sort of thinking healthcare, but no, 90-odd um, percent, I'm saying, I would guess, is nothing to do with healthcare. It's it's cleaning all kinds of other things, businesses, offices, airports. So there are in industries from all around the world. It's the biggest expo for cleaning in the world. There were 30,000 delegates, and it was absolutely massive. We're going to put a, a video on the website of just one hall and that hall was multiple airport hangar sizes and uh uh and that was full of industry and there were 12 of those i think yeah i mean it's basically it's held in the rye in amsterdam which is ecmid doesn't quite fill it although it's pretty close and this Mm. did fill it so it is Mm. massive it is massive and so the the sort of we sort of all kinds of things there, but one of the things that was on this on in addition to Interclean was the Clean Hospitals Group put together a, a hospital cleaning forum, and uh, Alexander Peters and Didier Pate organised that. And the, I guess the idea of that was to have bring some science to to the exhibition and to try and link up industry with clinicians and academics. So there are a few infection control. Um, personnel that were also present at, uh, at clean hospitals as well, Martin. Yeah, they were. I mean, it's a, it's a chance to get people talking to each other because a few years ago, I, I think the people who run into clean recognised the fact that a lot of the kit that's being used to clean, as you mentioned, airports, hotels, mm-hmm. etc., just gets transported into hospitals and used there. It may not necessarily be that applicable for that setting. It was never designed mm-hmm. specifically for that setting. Uh, And so, therefore, maybe there will be opportunities for industry and healthcare to have discussions so that equipment will become a bit more fit for purpose or, you know, at least Mm. taken uh, some of the healthcare industry's needs and wants, really, into into the design process. So it's to start a dialogue, really, get people working together and and also trying to bring a little bit more science into healthcare cleaning. Mm. And I think Didier and Alexander did a really good job of that. To be honest, so there was so, a lot too. of interest. Yeah, a lot of interest from the industry. There was, and I think you know, after our, um, after each of the speakers talk, I mean, we we all, we spoke, Martin, and there were lines of um, of industry wanting to to have a chat about their product or their idea and whether it would be suitable on healthcare, and and that that I think is is really good. Um, we also the other big revelation. At the healthcare and uh, cleaning forum was that infection control matters is also a dating service. Yes, who knew? I mean, we're, we're not developing an online app, but it was very nice to see friends like uh, Isabel Lamb from Belgium who actually mm. met through listening to a podcast and then contacted each other. And uh, Isabel's contacted a few people, so that's nice to hear yeah. that. We yeah, put people to in touch. Too. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, actually there were people from all around the world who went to Interclean. It, it was really quite remarkable. And, you know, we met a couple of Aussies there too who have, have got a cleaning company in Australia and um, Jared and James, and uh, they were interested in how they could improve things from a science point of view as well. So great kudos to to that kind of side of things. And I think that was the beauty of, of Interclean was to see that kind of thing happening and, uh, and industry and people with businesses getting engaged in wanting to make things better. So, uh, so that was great. And Martin, one of the, um, I guess one of the segues to that is, you know, we walked around the exhibition and we were blown away by the number of different coloured microfiber ports there are. Uh, and... <laughs> 
how many different hand hygiene dispensers that could be. That there was a whole haul of hand hygiene dispensers of every color, shape, description, as well as um, microfiber. Waste bins, I mean, waste you know, bin. Just about everything you can think of as a commodity in hospital, you had a whole haul dedicated yeah, to problem. just that type really of sure. item. Yeah, I'm not really sure how a lot of them are different, but anyway. There was, um, but walking around, a couple of things caught our attention, and you you noticed that there were some big companies there, like they're the big name companies, you know, multi million, if not multi billion dollar companies there, and and you had a chat with a couple of them about uh, some floor cleaners and whether I'll let you I'll let you tell the story actually. Yeah, I mean, it came on the back of. Um, uh, actually a podcast just a couple of months ago uh, from Nottingham where they'd found the clean water tank of a floor scrubber had become contaminated with a CPE and you just couldn't get rid of it from the tank. And uh, I spoke mm. to a few people from big companies like, uh, like Nil Fisk and uh, a couple of the other really very big companies. And they said, I said, how do you clean the clean water tank? I oh, just wash it out. And then, well, what about if you get, bacteria in it i will just put a disinfectant in it which doesn't take into account the fact that biofilm are going to stick to the inside of these tanks because mm -hmm. they will mm -hmm. never be designed to a be cleaned properly um because they're supposed to be used every day emptied and dried but meanwhile back on planet earth we know people aren't going to bother necessarily always emptying them so you're going to yeah. get biofilms inside and once you get a biofilm inside then you're not going to shift the organisms and one of them actually had said uh, culture, I think it was that. Yeah, we did manage to develop a tank that you could take out and decontaminate properly, but no one would buy it because it's too expensive, and probably only the hospital market mm. would be interested in that anyway. So that that was an interesting aspect of it. You know, if you mm. could have a like a disposable liner you use for your clean water, and then that comes out every day, and you fill with a new disposable lighter. But it it just highlighted to me that there's so many products that are used in our in our hospitals that actually we don't get a say in. You know, I might mm. be able to say, okay, we want to use this disinfectant um, because we know what our organisms are. But how that necessarily gets applied, you know, with what cloth is often the choice of our either in-house hotel services, which we may get involved with, or our cleaning contractor, which we probably won't get involved with. Mm. And just walking around looking at the range of microfiber cloths, what's the science mm. that one is better than another? Don't yeah. know. Yeah, it, 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 it opened up my eyes up to the fact that there's a whole wave of uh, aspects of healthcare hygiene that actually we don't get a say in or are not yeah. involved in. And that's either we don't know about it or we haven't thought about it or we're excluded from it. And I'm not really yeah. sure what that is. It's probably a mixture of all three. Yeah. And, you know, the, the beauty of having that sort of meeting was you, you talked to a couple of CEOs or there was a couple of development officers for these big companies and they were, a couple were generally interested in, oh, no, we were, yeah. what do you think about that? So, yep. you know, kudos to them and hopefully they do come up with something. But this is the beauty where we need to get the right people talking to each other. Uh, yep. We need to get you know, infection control and, and other groups talking to manufacturers of products to make sure they're fit for purpose and meet meet our needs and uh, and so I think that's probably one beauty of this and you know uh, the more that can happen I think in the future the better I think the next interclaims every is it every two years Martin? every two years yeah uh, yeah so um, uh, look, there was some other there was a little innovation hub there and oh, yeah. um, <laughs> innovation we thought we're going to check out the innovation hub. Uh, the drone that cleaned windows. I quite like that one. Uh, that, that might put people out of a job cleaning uh, high-rise windows in the future. But uh, there's a couple of things that certainly weren't innovation in my mind. But, no, um, there was the iClean handle, uh, which, the iClean handle yes. which had a spectacular claim that a single door handle can infect 60% of the people in the building within four hours. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's that outstrips any orthopedic surgeon I've ever come across <laughs> by, by a distance. They, they would uh, outstrip you getting involved in with norovirus by someone in the likelihood of getting it. Like, it's, yeah. it's, uh, and they claimed a, a return of investment time. within less than 12 months. So, they, I must ask Nick Graves what cost effectiveness study he's done in it to be able to demonstrate that. <laughs> but it's, actually, uh, there was absolute... one, there was one, wasn't there? There was one we did I... quite like. Yeah, there is, yes, I'll get to them. I think just on the point though, we, we did, I mean, that is a, that's a, just a ridiculous claim. But um, 
you know, this is what we do need to hold people to account for making such ludicrous statements. And you couldn't get away with that in the healthcare industry. Um, and one of the big differences, I think, in this sort of expo is probably there isn't that regulation. I mean, you could pick up all kinds of goodies uh, as you walked around the expo and um, all kinds of drinks and anything else that you might want. So it's a very different type of exhibition to what we would normally have in a scientific conference. There's a lot more rules and regulations around that. Um, but certainly you wouldn't see those kind of outrageous claims. So we do need to be able to account for that kind of stuff. I, w- I would say, though, it's worth a visit, though, wouldn't you? You know, it, oh, once absolutely. in your career. You oh, know, it's worth a wa- was... just a, a, a day's walk around would actually open people's eyes to different yeah. aspects of healthcare hygiene that maybe we hadn't thought about. And that's that's really yeah. what I quite liked about it. And there, and there were some good, in, you know, there were some interesting, certainly ergonomic related and health and safety related improvements you could see to various cleaning apparatus and that from vacuum cleaners to floor cleaners, all kinds of things. I mean, I got myself in a nice big truck, I think, at one point to, to clean the floor. <laughs> yeah. um, but, the, you know, the, the, you're right. But there was plenty to see. It opened your eyes, made you, made you think a bit more about what, what are some of these things made of and where's the science behind some of them. Um, I, and I think there was one there was one microfiber cloth or one cloth I went past and I said, I had a claim on it as well. I'm just trying to rack my brains to talk the detail was. And I questioned them and said, oh, just wondering what does this mean? And, you know, they couldn't answer it. It was just another one of those ludicrous claims that were made. But they were in the innovation of there was one other thing that was interesting, and that was a machine that uh, essentially you'd put your dry wipes into and the disinfectant came. Uh, it was a second part of the machine and it combined that dry wipe with a disinfectant when you push the button. Uh, so it provided the right amount of dose and the right amount of disinfectant and surfactant and whatever else was in there to for that wipe and you pull the wipe out. And so I like that because it's, it gets away the sort of idea of if you are using wipes, people leave them open, they dry out. But more importantly, I think from an environmental point of view, you're not carting lots of wipes which have already got are heavy because they've already got the fluid in them all over the world. And I think that from an environmental point of view, we cut down a lot of plastic and, and potentially a bit of transport costs as well. So I quite like that idea. And presumably you could use any disinfectant with a wipe. But, well, I'd, I'd like the idea that you could actually change your disinfectant. You know, okay, we've got a particular yeah. problem on this ward. You know, we've, we've got now a problem with C. diff. Therefore, we're now going to stick a sporicidal agent in there. Mm. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like that as well, as long as it was a long mm. active one. So I, I thought that was... Mm different you know i'd never seen anything like that before so i do like a bit of innovation yeah that's right um now there was and and i've been trying to think what they had there were some awful um catch cries of industry um caring for what comes next i think that was um (laughs) one of the toilet companies um big sign caring for what i'm not sure what's coming i know what's coming next out of the toilet and i wouldn't want to be caring for it but they but um yeah, there was some. There was some. It was. It was a bit of marketing on drugs, and uh, at times, so you could you could have a laugh and take it from what it was, but uh, uh, but it's still worth, still certainly worth going. Yeah, I would say so, and it's free as well. I think it's free to register, so you could easily spend a day wandering around there because it is an yeah. Expo. I think that was about it from Interclean. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. But yeah, look, it was uh, so well worth a trip. And if you ever happen to be around uh, May time, I think it is in Amsterdam, probably well worth a visit, I think. And um, But more importantly, I think it just demonstrated the need for us to, to continue to engage a lot more with industry about what our needs are. And hopefully forums and approaches like that will help. I never little thought about actually what kit is being used to clean in your hospital. Was it designed for an airport or a hotel? And it, you know, it, and actually, it's worth if you're got in-house cleaner and you've got to say in uh, what products they use. Maybe say next time you're going to choose a floor cleaner. Maybe I could be involved in in that, and we could look at what the water tanks are like, or you know, mm-hmm. or is it is it uh, likely to cause me an issue? You know, because mm-hmm. having water tanks sitting in a machine that really aren't dried out um, would not be good. That's and good it's, it, yeah, well, they're asking for trouble and also maybe something to put into the education program for staff because if they know why, you know, if they're told mm. enter the tank out every day, they may or may not do it. If you don't enter the tank out every day, you're going to coat the floor with a layer of multidrug resistant organisms, mm. probably would motivate them a little bit. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, Martin. Good chatting yeah. as usual. Yeah. And, uh...
That's it from the latest episode of Infectious Raw Matters. Bye, everyone. Bye now.